Hey, I'm Matt from the A-Team, and we're gonna be showing you how to go from this to this. Today on 4 Minute Film School, we're gonna be lighting overhead shots. Let's go. One thing you probably see all the time online are overhead shots. Shots of gear or products taken directly overhead. Sometimes these are called flat lights when you see everyone showing off the cool gear they have. Or sometimes it's called tabletop shooting when you see it in those fun colorful commercials. Overhead rigs are a great tool to have in your kit. Whether you're reviewing products on YouTube or taking pictures of watches or cooking in your apartment, being able to shoot top down gives you a great angle that can be used for dynamic shots or a cool second angle. But how should you light your overhead shots? So the first thing you want to do is build an overhead rig system, and there's plenty of ways of doing this. For smaller cameras, say a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you can use a standard C-stand. So now we have our C-stand set up, we have the knuckles over to the right, we have our monitor so we can check our framing, and super important, we have our C-stand sandbagged. And we made sure to arm it just enough directly above our table. The key to making this work is having a ball head mount. This allows you to position the camera any way you want it after it's mounted. If you can, set your camera to autofocus just in case you bump it. Now that we have our rig set up, let's take a look at how cool this shot looks from above. So for our first setup, we have a typical overhead gear review shot. And we actually have this set up with two different cameras, which brings up the question, how do you set up a consistent light for both camera setups? For that, we have a 120B Mark II serving as our big softbox. We actually have a light dome attached to it, and this basically gives us nice, consistent light between both camera setups. This overhead camera gives a nice, detailed look at both my hands and the gear that I'm reviewing. Make sure the stand holding your overhead camera is placed on the opposite side of your main light source to avoid any shadows. The primary reason why we're using a softbox is to illuminate nice soft light onto both myself for the wide shot and our product in the overhead angle. Now, when you cut between both the wide shot and the overhead angle, both shots are nice and well lit. Our last light is an H672 placed on the floor pointed upwards. This isn't doing anything for me or the table, it's just illuminating the background. So now, let's take a look at an example of that. How's it going everybody? My name is Matt from the A-Team and today we have a brand new product to show off called the Aperture MC. This thing is super cool, it's super awesome, it is our first WRGB panel and it's the size of your palm, it's really nice. And it's got some really nice built-in effects to it. It's battery powered, you can charge it via USB-C. For our second look, we have a more staged light setup. You can use this for photos, maybe for thumbnails, or maybe even advertising something online. The great thing about a top-down camera is once it's set up, you don't have to move it. A lot of filmmakers will make a permanent setup for their overhead rig, so it's the same every time. However, it might be good to use a zoom lens on your camera, because all we did was punch in an R frame onto the subject without swapping lenses. You avoid bumping the camera this way. Consider shooting a video and then taking a still frame out of that video. Because we staged a bunch of different objects as set dressing, we we wanted to minimize as many shadows as possible, so we brought in our 120D with the softbox as close and as frontal as possible, and this eliminated all shadows around our objects. Then we added a white bounce, which all this is is just a simple white foam card. And to add even more fill on the opposite side of the key light, we added a 672 bouncing off of the white board. We could have lit the opposite side using just the 672, but we didn't want to add any other shadows. So let's take a look at that shot put together. Time for a recap. In order to light great overhead shots, there are two things to consider. First, soft light is the way to go. I know we say that a lot, but it's true. Soft light will be the most forgiving when you're moving your products around because its large size will wrap around the object. Second, be careful with shadows. With small products, shadows can become really obvious. Try adding fill light without creating more shadows by using a bounce. Comment question of the day, what is the coolest overhead shot you've ever seen? Comment below for a chance to win an Aperture M9. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials. I've been Matt with the A-Team. Thanks for watching 4 Minute Film School and happy shooting. <laughs>